Hello everyone and welcome back to my Asteroid Defense series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. Been a while since I've done an episode in the Asteroid Defense series, mainly because I was caught up doing stuff in the Realism Overhaul set of mods, especially trying to get to Mars in that. Uh, not Duna, because Realism Overhaul is readjusted for real solar system. But uh, yeah, so that, that's been a little bit tricky and uh, occupying some of my time. And also there's been the EDB series where I launch rockets in a realistic manner. But anyway, uh, so I got caught up in those things. But I am looking forward to dealing with some of the missions that we've launched here. Uh, we've got the four dual missions here, as you can see. And I want to see what's going on with our man mission. Okay, it looks like it's fine. On a good trajectory. I've decided and with consultation from Kerbal scientists that we probably don't need to bother with the asteroid that's uh, uh, coming in Where, can we focus on things here? Uh, Kerbin? Okay, well that's good enough. Uh, yeah, this asteroid here. It's a Class B and I think we're going to declare that Class B's do actually break up in the atmosphere, that they're not going to pose a problem to us. Um, it's got to be a little bit too tedious to aim at every single asteroid that comes in. And the Class B's, 4 meters to 7 meters, really are so small that I think we can safely ignore them. I'm going to mainly be concerned about Class D's and E's because after all they pose more of a challenge and uh, while we've taken care of a lot of class D's is uh, mainly the class we've been aiming for uh, we haven't actually seen the class E I think so I'm gonna be looking forward to that and seeing how much it is the class D's are all around 600 tons and so what is a class E so we'll uh, save our save our rockets our uh, asteroid intercept rockets for a class E and see if we can tackle that challenge because that'll be a new challenge tackling a class B is not really a new challenge I think we all know I could knock this out of the way without any particular problem so on that note the thing we need to do in this episode is launch for Duna Right, because Duna is, is pretty much where it needs to be at for this sort of thing. Uh, maybe a little bit off here, but it is time to launch missions to Duna. So, let's go to the VAB and see what I can cook up. The Duna mission will launch on top of the IBA launcher, since once you've made a super heavy launcher, you, you ought to get your mileage out of it. And, well... I I thought about uh, making fairings, but I'm lacking the parts that I would like to use for that. As you can see, practically none of the panel parts, nor even the wing parts that would be most suitable for it, uh, are present. So we're going to have to do some more science in order to get the parts we need. And in fact, I checked, we only have 79 units of science right now. So, we're going to have to deal with this sort of open structure here. I've tried to... The struts are mainly for show rather than for... And that symmetry didn't work out quite right. Uh, show rather than for uh, structural integrity. Oh, the ladder is sort of... Oh, alright. I'll just leave that as it is. It's a little bit of asymmetry. Uh, I'm sure it might annoy, uh, it might annoy me even. But uh, we'll leave it for now. Okay, so as you can see, I've even attached Science Juniors here, just in case we can do some of those. The Well, the configuration is as follows. This is the return vehicle. I expect that the IVA launcher will be able to send us on our uh, trajectory to Duna, and then, and even bring us into orbit around Duna with this portion here, at the very minimum. And so this entire structure is going to go over there, and this is going to be the return vehicle. And it'll also have to do some maneuvering in orbit to dock with everything. This is the Ike lander, and this is the Duna lander. The Ike lander doesn't have goo containers. I've kept it spare so that we can... Uh, well, so that we can have a different lander, basically. Uh, 
the Dunalander had enough. Uh, well, I mean, I I could have made them the same. There's there's no reason why they couldn't be the same, except that I wanted to try something different. Oh well, and sometimes oh I think I missed putting lights. Sometimes it's interesting to try different modes in the same mission, and that's what we're gonna be doing here. Uh, yeah, we well that light might collide with that. Let's put the lights there maybe. Ugh, sticks out a little bit. Okay, that's that's acceptable. So I'm starting the lights on, just so that we get some of that. And these are on as well, good. So I put the science juniors here and we'll transmit that data if necessary. We're clearly not going to bring this back. I just didn't see anywhere to, even as it is, it's not exactly the most streamlined thing on the on the system and maybe I should shove them down a bit to make them look a little bit more reasonable. Uh, that's mildly better. Can't attach them to here or these because these probably drop off before we get to Duna or anything like that. Okay, we've got little thermometers, barometers. We don't have uh, uh, the gravitation one. So, what is it called? Ah. Uh, gra negative gravioli thing, right? Something like that. Alright, but you get the idea. So what's going to happen is we're going to be carrying three Kerbals, and then one will go in here, one will go in here to do those respective landings. Let's see now... Whoop. Action groups... I don't think we need anything. I think we're all good. I think the pods themselves have enough control wheel power. It looks like our crew will be Mackin Kerbin, Edval Kerman, and Mitgen Kerman. Fair enough. We'll just start it out like that. I don't see any reason to stall any further. Uh, there's probably some staging error somewhere. Let me let me quickly hunt for those. Okay, it's sort of unavoidable that we're going to have to decouple some of this manually if when we get there. And so I'm just gonna leave it at that. We don't have any of the stack separators. You can see that we've only got the couplers. So if we had stack separators, those would be more convenient to place here and here because of course we we don't want this attached to either side. But we don't have uh, the separators, we just have the decouplers. So we're going to have to make do with that. Stack separator technology is apparently quite advanced. I moved these back up because I think they were interfering with the fuel line, or at least it looked like that. So I'm going to keep it like that. Oh, uh, one thing we can action group is solar panels on this. Yeah. All right, so I think we're ready to go. We've got our crew, we've got our rocket, and we've got our encounter with Duna. So let's save and take her out. Not the most elegant rocket I've ever devised, but on the bright side, it is actually very bright because of all the rock, uh, lights that have been turned on. So yes, it is bright. So that is the bright side. And we're all set. SAS on, throttle up. You'll notice the mod propellant is not full, and that's because the tanks on the landers are only partially filled. I wanted a little bit more mod propellant, but not a lot more, so just a little addition to... Oh, did I remember to put RCS ports on the lander? Uh, on the... on both landers? Yeah, okay. Those, that seems to be a thing. Okay, get the camera back. There we go. Alright, so... Everything looks good. The carbonates look copacetic. And... Light. And launch. And our mission to Duna is underway. We have cleared the tower.
all systems look nominal. And Ball reports that everything is very calm in the cabin. It actually looks like they're not entirely sure that they've taken off or not. It is a very smooth ride so far. They look like they could do with a magazine to read or something. They look like they're in some sort of waiting room. Just sort of staring at the wall. These three are really three peas in a pod. We really should have found somebody like Jeb who would be uh, all, all smiles. He's got a bit of a wiggle. Uh, it's got a lot of wiggle. Uh-oh. I do not sense aerodynamic fluidity. Well, I said sense fluidity, but not, uh, not the most aerodynamically happy situation here. So I'm going to tone down the rockets. And actually, uh, no, we need it at least that much. Uh, I think the guys in the cabin are a little bit more worried now. I think they suddenly realized they're part of a space mission. Wobbly rockets will do that to you. This is... Very disconcerting. I'm not sure what start. I mean, clearly the tall payload is a big part of this problem here. But also the sheer power of the engines, the fact that they're overpowered for the payload, perhaps, might be a thing. Okay, shut down first stage, please. Cut off, cut off, cut off. First stage cut off, finally. Okay. Okay. And. Very nice. Okay. Perhaps we can gain some more stability now. Well, Mackin is looking positively happy. It's very confident now. Let's begin plotting for Duna. Since I too am very confident. By the way, you might notice the docking port's a little bit high on the pods, and that's because I actually slipped a tiny, the smallest possible controller in between the pod and the docking port. I hope that's not too much of a problem, but it's, it's good to be able to control them even when they don't have a Kerbal in, just in case. Ooh, this is still very, very wobbly. Hmm. This could cause problems. Okay, that's that stage. How are we doing it, actually? Okay. So we'll just uh, burn out of apoapsis. And let's see if, in fact, we could do more with that. Uh, no, we can't. Not really. This is, well, this is our direction of orbit. Yeah, that's not a good place to do anything. So let's just circularize at that apoapsis. So, uh, actually I want to 
hang on to these while I turn because there are reaction wheels on these but not on some of the other portions of this. So I'm going to take advantage of the reaction wheel power we have before I ditch this stage. Seems like it's probably a good idea to extend solar panels. We seem to be slightly de depleting electric charge here. We've got all those lights on after all. Okay, I think we're lined up, so I'm going to wait till it settles down and then release the spin stage. So of course, wiggling a bit. Oh, it's going a little bit further than I thought it should. Come on, stability. Now, I haven't added any reaction wheels to the payload. I'm just relying on the reaction power in the pods. So, that could be a contributing factor to our instability. Alright, here we go. <sighs> Let me just check staging for a sec. Hold on. Um... This is a very complicated sort of situation we've got here. Yeah, I guess that's right. Okay, good. Yeah, that's what I wanted to see happen. So that portion will return into the atmosphere. No problems there. And let's time warp. Uh, throttle. Okay, we are now in orbit. And we're also looking a lot more like a spaceship, aren't we? Look at that. Uh, well, the sort of empty portions here didn't look very good on the launch pad. Now they look like a very spaceshipy sort of thing going on here. So that's that's pleasant. Okay, so we have our encounter. It's a 7,743 kilometers uh, for a Duna periapsis. That's pretty good. Uh, probably would have wanted to get even closer considering our uh, our inclination actually before I made this maneuver was zero. So. But I guess the rest of it will come on a mid-course adjustment, so no problems there. And in fact, we're going to follow this mission through. I think the missions to Jewel are going to take much longer. They haven't even really gotten too far. So, so yeah, I think we'll be able to complete this mission, or at least get them on their way back before we even have to deal with the Jewel missions. Now. First things first, let's turn to our maneuver node and start burning for Duna. Once again, I have to keep an eye on these tanks because otherwise, I, well, no, I, I guess I would be able to see here whether they're out or not. Some of my configurations, I actually have to look at the tanks to figure out when to stage. Okay, it looks, looks decently stable now that it's outside of the atmosphere. Very nice looking spaceship, actually. It'll almost be a shame to stage the, the three pods on the side there. Not much battery. I should have added more battery to this thing. Have the solar panels, but not, not the battery. Okay trying to get this right. I shut down the engines but just so that I can see what's going on. Kind of get rid of the maneuver node and really take a look at how our orbit is going to progress. Okay. Mm, looks like we're going to just go with a 12,000 kilometer approach. It's not bad, and in fact we've got a lot of fuel. I now regret not putting the Eichlander at the bottom. And the reason being that the Eichlander could then use this 
fuel tank and engine to transfer to Ike. It looks like we have plenty of fuel. These fuel tanks will be expended uh, on our entry into Duna orbit, so they'll get us into orbit around Duna. But then we could have used this engine to get the Ike lander to Ike. Now what I'm envisioning is that we're going to get into orbit around Duna. We're going to then detach this portion and that. That's actually going to help bring the this lander down to the surface of Duna, uh, getting rid of some of its velocity and saving the fuel in this. Why is there no oxidizer in this? I don't remember turning down the oxidizer. Huh. Okay, well, fine. That can be... When did I... How did the... I... Whatever. Anyway, okay, so we seem to be short on oxidizer for some reason. Uh, glad I checked that. But, alright. Not that I checked that, I just randomly clicked on the darn thing. Okay, but, uh, yeah, alright, so, fine. <laughs> now I'm flustered. What else have I done wrong here? But, uh, yeah, so now this will help bring this down. And then... This, all of this will probably transfer to Ike. This will land on Ike, then rendezvous with that pod. Then this will return to Duna to rendezvous with this. Or if this has enough fuel, it can transfer to Ike and make the rendezvous with the command pod around Ike. So those are, that's our mission model right now. That's the plan. And luckily everything is going to Duna intact. Except we're a little bit short on fuel. So let's actually take this out in this episode to... We've got enough time here. Take it into interplanetary space, do the mid-course plane change, and then bring it into the sphere influence of Duna. Okay, so we've got a planned mid-course plane change to get to 228 kilometers. Our dual missions, checking up on them, are barely underway. We're over here still, though. But they've got a long way to go yet. Our planned encounter with Duna is in 66 days. They've got a 200 plus day trip. Okay, so let's get to this mid-course plane change. So you see the situation here now. We've got our four dual sojourners on such a trip. And of course the man mission is getting there quicker. So you see it's quicker encounter and these will take a little bit longer to get to Jewel. And uh, don't worry, I didn't forget about the guys we still got on the asteroids. They're, they're a little bit lonely right now, but we'll bring them back in the next episode. So next episode we'll bring back the guys that we had doing science on the asteroids, bring that science back home so that we can do further mischief. And we will also look into conducting our Duna missions in the next episode. We're just going to get this mission into the sphere of influence of Duna. Very carefully. The timing is not so sensitive. The Delta V is. Also the direction is. Okay. Let's see now. 510, that's not bad. 510 kilometers. Continuing into the Duna Sphere of Influence. I've belatedly realized that we we seem to have Probe Launcher Y coming in at Duna as well. So Maybe I need to take a look at what to do with that, because I forgot about that. Uh, what timing do we have on this mission? 10 days? Let's switch to Probe Launcher Y. So if you remember, this is one of the probes launched by aircraft. And it is now coming in. We sent one to Jewel and we sent one here. It's coming in in 4 days. 
So let's take care of this one first. Or, oh no, that's that's its plot. When is it actually coming in? Oh no, we forgot to do its mid course plane change. I passed its mid. Oh, I hope I don't do that for the rest. These other guys are still before their mid course plane change. Um, so I missed its mid course plane change. Okay, can we do anything to correct that now? Two hundred fifty-six point six. Who? And that's in six days. Okay. Well, we'll we'll try that. Shame, I just lost track of this. Yes, uh, Kerbal Alarm Clock. If uh, if I was using mods, Kerbal Alarm Clock would be a thing. Hmm. We seem to have an Ike encounter. I think I might try that. Okay, let's do that. 259, let's hope we have the Delta V for this. It's gonna be about 250-ish anyway. So either we've got it or we don't. Probably better to burn mon propellant first, but I don't know if that's really gonna get us anywhere. Okay, well, we have to wait for five hours anyway. Okay. Right. Let's burn some mop propellant just to save the mass. Not bad, but let's keep the rest just in case. And burn using the main engine now. Okay, and then fine tune with the mod propellant as we see our. Well, oh. uh, we don't have the icon counter, but we have a very good Duna periapsis. Maybe we should just go with this. Okay, so this probe is fine. We're gonna have... let's let's do this quickly. Let me get the probe into its periapsis and then bring the Duna mission into its entry into the Duna sphere of influence. Okay, so here we are. And there's no particular reason why we shouldn't actually make an orbit out of this. Oh no, wait, this is just a barometer, isn't it? What have we got on here? Yeah, it's just a barometer, I think. So we need to transmit that in... Oh, and a thermometer. So we need to transmit that information back to Kerbin as this smashes into Duna. We'll set a maneuver pretty close to Duna so that we can get... Uh, there's no point doing a barometer and thermometer reading around Ike anyway, so... We want it to eventually hit Duna, but we don't need it to go down too fast. And so... That'll do. Somewhere between that and that. Yeah, that, that's good. Five kilometers sounds like it'll definitely crash into Duna, but not too quickly. Alright, uh, before I lose track of our manned mission, let's see how long it has. We're going to be crashing into Duna in about 13 hours. Okay. Will it let me select? Yes, okay. Alright, this mission has its Duna encounter in four days, so we're safe. Let's finish up Probe Launcher Y. So, let's do this. We don't have to worry about the fact that it's less, less in efficient, less efficient than it would be if I did the burn out here. 
when I'm doing the burn this close to Duna because efficiency is hardly an issue when you've got this much fuel and you plan to have the craft smash into the surface. So we should be alright. Time warp. There's the red planet. Okay, here we go. We've got a lot of Delta V with this little guy. Eh, maybe a little bit more than that. Okay. So, here we go. Let's get into the atmosphere, do the barometer and thermometer reading, and then watch this explode. Oh, transmit the data first. The man mission, of course, somewhat makes this superfluous, but you never know what might happen. So we should probably take advantage of whatever attempts to get science we've got. I can retract this solar panel just so we don't get any premature explosions. And let's try and log temperature. Yeah, let's transmit that. Where's our barometer? Let's see if that's doable. Not right now. I want to keep this solar panel in the sunlight. That's the same one. Doesn't even want me to do a reading on the other one. Still in space near. Not too sure if there's an atmospheric reading available. Here, this, this one just doesn't want to do it anymore. So that's a shame. Nope. Once the barometer fails, it fails permanently, apparently. Still not in the atmosphere. Could have fooled me, but okay. Okay, well, it doesn't look like there is an atmospheric reading for the thermometer around Duna. But we, we're definitely going to be able to check that out all the way to the ground. Oh, there we go, flying at Duna. Okay, transmit that. I hope it doesn't snap in the atmosphere. I forget if that's just a realism overhaul thing or whether it's a general thing that the Commutron 16 snaps in the atmosphere. Hey, uh, do you suppose we could do one at the surface? I think it might be too, too late for that.
We're definitely going to come back down. So let's try and make a surface reading out of this. Of course, we've got the man mission that also can do, handle that part, but you know, while we're here. Uh, that's not the way I wanted to burn the RCS. I actually want to use the RCS to slow us down a bit. But, yeah, okay. And, there we go. Can't really tell how high we are we're at right now. Seems pretty high. Oh no. I see indications of ground. Okay, this is trickier than I envisioned. Okay, that's fine. Okay, there we go. Soft landing of our probe on the surface of Duna. Log temperature. Transmit that data. Well, these uh, these little probes launched by by that aircraft uh, turn out to be pretty good. We can even log pressure data. And uh, let's extend the solar panel now that we're down here. And perhaps we can transmit this as well. I don't get the feeling we've got much sun. Do we have enough energy to transmit this? Not enough electric charge. Okay, our probe is sort of tilting over right now. The Cumutron 16 seems more resilient than normal. Uh, okay, uh, well without, our, uh, without uh, electric charge I can't control it and stop it from spinning here. Okay, but uh, this is this is good. I think I'm not gonna stick around and wait for it to recharge. It's down here. If uh, we decide we really need the rest of the barometer reading, we'll come back to it. But it, yeah, it's safely on the surface of Duna. Turns out we landed a probe on Duna unexpectedly, and so maybe the probe that we've got destined for Lathe, we can do the same. That's an interesting point, isn't it? Lathe has a nice thick atmosphere to slow us down. So maybe we'd be able to... Oh, we sent a little bit more. Is that right? Anyway. Focus, focus. Let's switch to our main Duna mission. So I'm just going to get these guys into the sphere of influence of Duna. And then next time we'll get them into orbit and uh, perhaps start looking at the the activities we'll need to do and also I want to get those guys back from those asteroids around Kerbin. So here we are. Alright, uh, current periapsis 530.
and I'm going to save all of what we do around Duna for the next episode. We're probably going to adjust our inclination because we want to be able to do activities with Ike. So the first thing to do is probably an inclination adjustment. And then we'll continue from there in the next episode. So, a uh, few surprises, and we've dealt with our missions successfully so far. Probably going to have to look into those mid-course adjustments on these guys. Uh, probably past the one for the, ex the man mission to Jewel, actually. That's a little bit unexpected. I didn't get the. Uh, I didn't expect him to get this far this fast. Okay, lots to do in the next episode. I better remember everything. All right. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.